Since his retirement, we've all got to know The Undertaker a little better. Through his podcast appearances and interviews, we've come to know that Mark Calloway is a pretty chilled out dude. He was in WWE for decades and very few people ever had a bad word to say about him, so he must have been doing something right. And on his part, Taker very rarely seems to have had a bad word to say about anyone else, but there are always exceptions to the rule, and in this video, we're digging a little deeper to find those wrestlers who, in one way or another, seriously pissed him off. He got the measure of Hulk Hogan very early on in his WWF career. It was during a match at the Survivor Series in 1991, just a year after his debut, where the men wrestled in the main event for the WWF Championship. During the match, Taker delivered a tombstone pile driver, and Hogan claimed that the move injured his neck. Backstage, Hogan told anyone that would listen that he was hurt, and it was the fault of The Undertaker. But you only have to watch the video back to see that the move was executed perfectly. Taker's knees hit the mat and Hogan's head was a good few inches off the ground at the time. The Undertaker was stunned. He just couldn't believe what he was hearing coming from the Hulkster. After spending days worrying that he'd injured the most legendary wrestler in WWF history, he asked to see the replay. And of course, he saw for himself that Hogan's head never touched the mat. He went up to Hogan and challenged him on this, but Hogan allegedly made up an excuse about Taker gripping him too tightly. And from that day forward, Taker was wary of Hulk Hogan. The men did work together again in the future, but he never trusted him. Taker respected Hogan's place in the business, but he always kept him at arm's length. A couple of years later, and The Undertaker was in a feud with Giant Gonzalez. His relationship with Gonzalez was strained from the very beginning. This massive man was brought into the WWF in 1993, and his size was meant to be his major selling point, but it quickly became a big problem. You see, Gonzalez wasn't just big, he was also awkward in the ring and he lacked the basic skills that a professional wrestler needs, e.g. he didn't know how to wrestle. This became very clear during their match at WrestleMania 9. The match was supposed to be a spectacle with two of the biggest men in the business facing off against each other, but it turned into a disaster. By now, The Undertaker had a reputation for being able to work with almost anyone, but this guy was beyond the pale. Taker had to carry the entire match, trying to make it look good, while also avoiding getting hurt by Gonzalez's clumsiness. The men had to wrestle each other at dozens of house show matches in 1993, and eventually, Gonzalez managed to cause an injury to The Undertaker. Every time, he'd pull me down, grab me by the back of my head, and I'm expecting the shot across the shoulder blades, and he'd hit me across the back of the neck. I was as patient as long as I could be. Five seconds in, he pulls me down and cracks me across the back of the neck. Once I get the feeling back in my fingers, because I'm getting stingers, I flipped. Now bearing in mind that The Undertaker is usually a chilled out kind of guy, what he did next must have been really out of character. I turned around and started wailing on him. He had no clue. I hit him so fast, so many times, that he couldn't defend himself. He tried to lean back and I'm wailing on him. I ended up getting out of the ring. It was a count out and I was waiting for him to come back. He came back, he was lumped up and they held me back. I'd lost it. I felt bad afterward. Mabel was another big man that caused Taker an injury back in the 90s. The big man had recently won the King of the Ring tournament and was being given a massive push. But that was a controversial decision, as many people felt he just wasn't ready to be a main event player. Mabel was a big man, weighing over 500 pounds. His size made him a hazard in the ring, and if he wasn't careful, he was going to injure somebody. And that's exactly what happened. He found himself in a rivalry with The Undertaker, and during one match, he delivered a botched leg drop. 
the move resulted in The Undertaker suffering a broken orbital bone and that was a serious injury that put him out of action for several weeks. According to Mabel's tag team partner Mo, things quickly blew up backstage. There was the face-off, a lot of yelling and screaming between Taker and Mabel, but as far as a physical fight, I never witnessed one. Taker was the locker room leader and he felt that it was his responsibility to correct the young dudes. So as far as their conversation and what it was about, I respect the process. Mark wasn't one of those guys that just bullied anybody. Mabel left the WWF soon after, but then he was rehired a couple of years later and repackaged as Viscera. Taker insisted that Viscera be put in his Ministry of Darkness faction just so he didn't have to face him in the ring again. Shawn Michaels was notoriously difficult to work with back in the day and he managed to rub The Undertaker up the wrong way too. By 1997, Taker was a respected locker room leader while Michaels was at his most obnoxious and the two men together were like oil and water. Things came to a head backstage during the infamous Montreal screw job. Taker was furious about how Vince McMahon handled the situation and confronted him in his office. Michaels meanwhile made himself scarce and hid away from The Undertaker, terrified that he was going to beat him up for his involvement in the screw job and that tension continued into WrestleMania season. Steve Austin was set to beat Michaels for the WWF Championship, but there were rumours that Michaels didn't want to do business, and so Taker took matters into his own hands. He was taping up his fists when he cornered Michaels and told him to follow through with the plan, or else. After that threat, Michaels did as he was told, and the match went according to plan. Years later, and their relationship improved, and The Undertaker even retired Michaels in 2010. But oh boy, back in the 90s, things got tense backstage between these two men. Where Shawn Michaels and I are today, and where we were back then on a personal level, it's taken a complete 360. If Shawn Michaels back then were on fire, I probably wouldn't piss on him to put him out. I mentioned earlier that The Undertaker always comes across as being a chilled out kind of guy, but the perception of him did change for a while in 2001, around the time the WWF bought WCW. In fact, it's been said that he became something of an asshole at the time. When they joined the company, many of the new WCW guys got a hard time from the established WWF stars, and DDP was no exception. In his first appearance on Raw, he faced The Undertaker in a street fight, but there was tension backstage before their match. DDP had a habit of writing down his matches, planning them from top to bottom. Triple H saw this and warned DDP not to show his notes to The Undertaker, but DDP showed him anyway. The Undertaker grabbed the notes, crumpled them up and threw them in the trash. Old school guys like him just didn't appreciate planning matches out on paper beforehand. And The Undertaker gave DDP absolutely nothing during their feud. He buried him both on screen and off. Taker also buried other WCW talent like Mike Awesome and the tag team Chronic at the time. He just seemed to hate working with those new guys from Atlanta. Brock Lesnar also managed to piss off Taker during his first run in the company. Lesnar was pushed hard as the next big thing, but then he just decided to leave WWE in 2004. This upset a lot of people backstage, including The Undertaker, because Taker had helped establish Lesnar as a main event superstar. His sudden departure made all of that work seem like a total waste. Things seemed to get heated between the men at UFC 121, Lesnar had just lost to Cain Velasquez and The Undertaker was in the crowd watching the show. They ended up coming face to face and it looked like they might come to blows. Lesnar talked about this in his autobiography where he said that he liked to work with The Undertaker but admitted they had some personal differences. In interviews since, Undertaker has clarified that the UFC incident was partly a work set up by Vince McMahon. Vince wanted to entice Lesnar back to WWE and they wanted to book a future match between the men at WrestleMania. 
which of course did happen and we all know how that one ended. <laughs>